mute. Okay, five o'clock, we're ready to go. And there we are. Okay. Sisters and brothers, welcome. You know, gun violence has reached epidemic proportions across America. Hardly a week goes by without an incident of mass shooting occurring at a school. We're ready to go. Oh, Jim. Sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, Incident of mass shooting occurring at a school, workplace, or even houses of worship. In addition to that, the level of daily homicides is at an all-time high in many American cities. Gun violence is estimated to cost Americans over $229 billion every year. While the Biden administration did manage to get through some minimal uh, level gun control legislation in this last session of Congress, much remains to be done. And that's why we're here today. About MGG. Musicians for the Greater Good. We're an alliance of singer-songwriters who care about the environment, social justice issues, and other uh, progressive concerns. Uh, we need you to donate. And to do that, uh, please go to, uh, well, you, 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 we're, we're raising funds for Brady United and Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense, the Rhode Island branch. And so please donate to uh, them during or after the concert. You can just go to musiciansforthegreatergood.org and use the red donut donut button, <laughs> the red donate button. <laughs> okay, and we'll start right off. We're very lucky to have David Roth with us today. David's songs have found their way to Carnegie Hall, the United Nations, several Chicken Soup for the Soul books, the Kennedy Center, NASA's Space Shuttle Atlantis, Peter, Paul, and Mary, and uh, uh, Kingston Trio CDs, and 15 of his own CDs. Five positive music awards, the Rise Up Singing and Rise Again songbooks, and venues in this and other countries for more than three decades. We're glad to welcome David Roth. I'm happy to sing for you. know, uh, uh, I heard something in the news uh, yesterday about uh, America returning to, quote, Team Normal, unquote. And uh, for me, that kind of started a couple years ago. Just a regular Joe in an irregular time. And isn't it time for a new paradigm? People say what they say. People go where they go. But at the end of the day, he's still a regular Joe. He's a regular guy in an irregular game. Maybe just what we needed instead of more of the same. People think what they think. People know what they know. But at the end of the day, he's still a regular Joe. Our differences are understood but regular sounds really good our differences Just a regular Joe, a lot like me and you. Time to take a deep breath after all we've been through. Opportunity knocks, and this I know I could use a big cup of regular Joe. A really big cup of regular Joe. Yeah. If anybody tells you there's no politics in guns And that now is not the time to change the laws 
Just meet the gaze of those who lost family or friends And tell me how we justify the cause It's well and good to send out loving thoughts and loving prayers But by now these thoughts and prayers are not enough all the good intentions and the cries to make a change must be followed up with action and rebuff. So change the laws, change the laws, change the contract, change the clause, change the mind and change the cause. Change the laws, change the laws. If politicians say, do not politicize these things, or get caught up in the moment, or in haste. I say it's precisely what we need to speak about, before another single life is wasted. So change the laws, change the laws, change the contract, change the clause, change the mind, and change the cause. Change the laws, change the laws. I will not be silenced, though the silencers abound. I will not be led by those opposed to common ground. If anybody tells you there's no politics and guns, they're the ones who know that money runs the show and as long as nothing changes they'll be happy and content and they'll do their best to keep the status quo so change the laws change the laws change the contract change the clause change the mind and change the cause change the laws change the laws Change the mind and change the cause. Change the laws. Change the laws. Two great songs of David Rock. And David, uh, David's agreed to uh, to end the show for us later on. So we'll be looking forward to that. Next, Marianne McAllister was singing as soon as she could talk. Her first word was downtown. She started figuring out chord diagrams in grade school and performed through high school and college. Uh, since raising her family of musicians, she's returned to her own music career, first earning a, view, a vocal performance music degree and studying classical guitar. She plays from a cabin on a wooded slope north of Baltimore, grateful for the virtual open mics as she happily isolates. Give it up for Marianne McAllister. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this effort. Um, you know, I don't even... This afternoon, I realized how much this, how lucky I am, and how much this um, strikes me. The song I want to perform for you is "Save the Children." It was written by Marvin Gaye in 1971, and uh, little did he know when he wrote this song. I mean, he's, he's prescient in it. Um, you know, just Columbine in 1999. My daughter was born in 1992, and it occurred to me before that that is a generation of kids that you know we might have did the duck and cover. You know, when we're old, kids have these things to be afraid of, but we got to grow up and out of the whole duck and cover. We even get to kind of laugh about duck and cover now. Whereas these kids, my daughter has never known the possibility of school not having a shooting in it. It's just it's a part of the school landscape. Um, Marvin Gaye, not only did he write this song, but he was killed by his own father by gun violence um, the day before his birthday in uh, 1984. So this is Save the Children.
Ellis Ralph, and after that, Stuart Malchus. Um, as a little boy in Massachusetts, Ellis fell asleep listening to his older sister's AM radio play, <clears throat> Pat Boone, Doo-Wop, then Elvis. But when Dylan came along during his junior high school years, that changed everything. All his life, Ellis has been using his singer-songwriter's superpowers in secret, working on the world's biggest problems like romance, theology, and internal rhyme. Uh, in 2008, Ellis met his wife, Judy Neal, at music camp, and uh, they married there the following year and relocated to Arkansas. For most of the last several years, Ellis has been writing a song a week. Put your hands together, please, for Ellis Ralph. Hey, Ellis. <clears throat> long song, so I'm sorry that introduction was so long. America has problems that are very plain to see. Let's just say these days things ain't the way they used to be. We patriots need a hero. I thank God we got one. That loyal, brave American. A good guy with a gun. As soon as we retake the house, we'll be all set to go. Them Democrats rigged the system, our majority said so. Whichever election we decide was rife with voter fraud, them voters now can never hide their crimes from us and God. We can send the votes back to the House for Republicans to fix. They'll select the next elector slate, correct the problem quick. When you line it up that way, our states have got more states than them. And that's all that it would take to make America great again. It's too bad we can't just remove the president and VP with an impeachment, trial, and jail time the way it ought to be. We investigated everything. We found out all the facts. They're corrupt top to bottom, it's as simple as that. But it's not just that blue Democrats took over the White House. The real problem is blue voters, so we need to take them out. The same way our founding fathers found was the way to get things done. By that loyal, brave American, a good guy with a gun. We put up with way too much. Now we have no more to give. We'll outlaw that Democrat party. We know right where they all live. But to bring them all to justice, round up every single one, we need a loyal, brave American, a good guy with a gun. So like our founding fathers who made America great, we're calling the good guys to show up. We'll let you know the date. Help get rid of all our blues and the battle will be won by the loyal, brave American. Good guy with a gun. 
Good guys with guns will really get out the vote when they go door to door. We don't have time for trials and jails. This calls for something more. More action. No more bullshit. The only one who can get it done is a loyal, brave American. A good guy with a gun. A good guy with a gun have no have no problem taking down any bad guy without one. Hell, it only takes one round, and the Democrats don't ever pack, so that takes care of that. Good guys with guns can get every one of them nothing flat. Now the effective way this operation could be swiftly done is by surprise after midnight, like a lightning hit and run. With the sleep still in their eyes, just quickly put them in their graves and then hurry on to the next house. We got a whole country to save. Of course, some folks will say this plan is illegal or extreme, but the real extremists are the Democrats, as we have plainly seen. To save the American way of life that the Founding Fathers won, we need the loyal, brave American, a good guy with a gun. Now to make America great again will be easy as can be. We got more guns and bullets, man, than we will ever need. It's gonna be a dirty job, but someone's gonna get it done. That loyal, brave, American, the good guy with a gun. So fill your clips with ammo, fill your trucks with gas. You heard the plan, now you know what all's gonna come to pass. Choose your fate, it's not too late to be all you can become. A loyal, brave American, a good guy with a gun. Wow. <laughs> wow. A darkly wow. hilarious song by Ellis Ralph. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much. Outstanding. Okay. Yeah, wow. Stuart Marcus is a member of Gathering Time, an internationally touring folk rock harmony trio in the spirit of the 60s. GT is known for astute songwriting, accomplished musicianship, and a stellar vocal blend. Gathering Time swept the International Folk Radio chart in March 2016 as their CD, Keepsake, took the number one album, number one song, and number one artist slots. They followed up with four top five singles. Their latest, Get Together, was number one in July 2020, named Long Island's Best by the Long Island Press. Give it up, please, for Stuart Marcus. I apologize for the, uh, the last minute arrival. Um, I was at a folk, uh, music conference called uh, Northeast Regional Folk Alliance, and my car wouldn't start this morning. And then I got home just in time to run up to uh, a gig at a nursing home in the Bronx, and then got stuck in traffic on the way back. So, <laughs> but I'm here. And this is great, and that was a great song, and I'm a little trepidatious about having to follow it. This is Stuart, one... Stuart, quick, quick question for you. Do you have original sound turned on? I do. Okay, great. Thank you. Is it not picking up well? It, there's I, a little lag going on, but I, you're fine. Okay. I, I checked it just before I signed on. Um, anyways, uh, this song violates my one of my most basic tenets about writing protest songs, which is, you know, they shouldn't be too preachy and they should be a little on the subtle side, but subtle doesn't seem to work anymore. I wrote this in 2019 when we didn't have the current president. There's a line alluding to him. It's called Thoughts and Prayers. We hear it on the radio, we see it on TV. The streets run red in yet another senseless killing spree. Old Mitch McConnell's on a camera saying that he cares. But asked what he will do, he says just two things. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. That's the GOP's refrain, thoughts and prayers. We hear it time and time again, and beyond that only platitudes and stares. 
They offer thoughts and prayers. Seems every week somewhere a scene of carnage, death, and gore. As twisted people get their hands on weapons made for war. Fearful millions come to march on Washington, D.C. Till they hit the roadblock that they call the GOP. Thoughts and prayers. They utter solemnly thoughts and prayers. And shrouded perfidy and a president pretending that he cares. They offer thoughts and prayers. Despite the polling, old McConnell is sure your views match his. The right to own a gun is the most important right there is. But what about that right to life? His answer shows his scorn. You have a right to life, but just until the day you're born. Thoughts and prayers. Unmeaningless cliche thoughts and prayers. Filibuster and delay because headlines fade with the girth, no one cares. And offer thoughts and prayers. So following the money now it has a lot to say. GOP gets major funding from the NRA. The NRA gets major funding from the industry. But funerals are funded still by folks like you and me. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah, we've heard it all before. Thoughts and prayers. As our kids pass through death's door, because we know deep down there's not a one who cares. They offer thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. As the GOP's refrain, thoughts and prayers. Hear it time and time again, and beyond it only platitudes and stares. They offer thoughts and prayers. Hello. All right. Let's hear it. Stuart Mark. Damn. That was perfect. That was great. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, now we'd like to call on Amanda Turner from Brady United. Uh, Amanda founded and has led the Seattle chapter of Brady since 2014. She's passionate about saving lives and ending gun violence through a multifaceted approach. Uh, in August 2022, she joined the Brady Board of Directors as its grassroots representative. Um, Amanda lives in Seattle with her husband and three sons. Amanda Turner, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you to Musicians for Greater Good for having this concert. I, I mean, I cannot think of a more lovely way to spend the afternoon um, than with you guys. Um, and thank you, Ron, specifically for inviting Brady to be a part of this. Um, it's, it's nice to be around like-minded people who care as much about gun violence and saving lives. You know, you, sometimes you feel like you operate in a bubble. And so it's nice to know that people across the U.S. really do care about this. Um, so I'm Amanda Turner. I joined Brady in 2014. Um, I used to be a first grade teacher. And I was a first grade teacher the year Sandy Hook happened. And I that year, I looked around my classroom, was trying to figure out if something like that occurred at my school, how I possibly could save my students. Um, and that year, I started having a lot of conversations with the parents and community about gun violence and just, you know, the ridiculousness that we were living in. But I didn't actually join Brady until the following year when my kids and I were next door to a school shooting. Um, Seattle Pacific University had um, somebody walk onto campus into an academic building, and we were in the academic building right beside it, um, came in with a shotgun and just started shooting students. And luckily his shotgun jammed and a student hero was able to tackle him and disarm him at that point. Um, and a student died that day. And because it's one student, you know, not three, not four, not 19, um, it didn't make the news. Um, but I went home that day done, you know, besides trying to think about my own students how to keep safe. Now my kids and I aren't safe at Taekwondo. I was, I was over it and I called Brady that day. Um, Brady, for people who don't know, was named after Jim and Sarah Brady. 
Jim Brady was Ronald Reagan's press secretary who was shot in 1981 on the assassination attempt, during the assassination attempt with um, Ronald Reagan. And he was in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. His, and when he died, I believe it was 18 years later, um, his death certificate still says from gunshot wounds. Um, it was complications from that injury that it eventually led to his death. Um, so just showing how, you know, you can survive the trauma, you can survive and years later, it's, it's the long lasting effects of gun violence. So Jim and Sarah, um, Republicans decided to do something about gun violence in America, um, and they pushed for background checks. And it took them um, working across the aisles on both sides. It was an uphill battle, and it took six votes of Congress in seven years before they finally got our background check bill passed. And that was under Bill Clinton in the early 90s. Um, and since then, Brady background checks have stopped more than four million gun sales from going to people who should not have guns. These are the prohibited purchasers. And so um, the landscape for the gun violence prevention movement in general has, we've had highs and lows over the last few months. Um, one of the highs was having the bipartisan safer community bill pass. That's our first gun legislation that's been passed in 30 years. So like we talked about in the beginning, it's a start, it's not the finish line, but it's, it, thank goodness we have a start. Um, some of the lows have been the Supreme Court dismantling many of our laws, but one of them was um, the Bruin decision, which um, canceled New York's requirement of a license to conceal carry a weapon. Now you can just conceal carry a weapon. You don't need a license for that anymore. Um, we saw firsthand the destruction of, um, of assault weapons in Uvalde and Buffalo and Highland Park. Um, and those are just the communities that have made the news in the last few months. And so on, on a high, the election last week saw a record number of candidates who really value gun violence prevention actually getting elected, um, winning votes, whereas this used to be kind of a third rail issue. It wasn't something you would always run on, especially in certain parts of the country. Now more and more voters prioritize gun violence prevention and are using that as one of their targeted issues to vote. So Brady specifically is, is tackling gun violence as a public health emergency. 111 Americans die every single day from gun violence. To give you some context, when I joined the movement in 2014, it was 89 Americans. So we are, in the short time I've been part of this, we are moving the wrong way and we're moving there pretty fast. One of the worst new statistics is that more kids die from gun violence today than any other cause. So from zero to 19, 22 kids, zero to 19 years of age, 22 kids a day now die from gun violence. And that was only eight when I started. So we are, we have work to do. We need, we, there's a lot to do here to save lives. Um, Brady specifically is trying to do this through, we call it the three C's, Congress, courts, and community. Um, the community or the chapters, you know, it's people like me who uh, join a chapter, start a chapter and work within our own community to do whatever we can, whatever our community needs to push gun violence safety. Um, whether it's, you know, informing people about safe storage in your home, asking before play dates, um, working on um, local legislation, we decide what our community needs and push for that with the support of the national chapters. Um, Congress is, you know, working with Congress, whatever Congress we have at the time, um, to advocate for our common, common sense gun laws. Um, some big things we are hoping for right now are, are an assault weapons ban, um, extreme risk protection orders across the U.S., um, ex and expanded background checks to cover all gun sales. So, of course, you know, once we passed our background check bill um, in the early 90s, the um, people who wanted a gun and were not able to have found ways around that. Um, one of those is like the gun show loophole. The other thing is selling them online um, where there's no background check needed. So today, one in five gun sales are conducted without a background check. And so we know this is how people who should not have guns are still getting access to them. Um, another thing Brady does, and this is 
one of the things I'm most proud of is courts. So we have a really strong legal action team and we partner with law firms across the US to stand up for victims and communities. Um, and so we take on the gun industry to fight bad laws, to stand up for good laws, and to advocate for people who've been harmed by guns. Um, we have been proven very successful in this. Um, and one of the things we've done well is to expose government inaction on things. So to make sure the government, you know, we have these laws, are they actually following the laws? So we're holding them accountable in the courts as well. Um, one of our big programs we've been working on, if you're in Missouri right now, you've probably have seen ads for it, is the In Family Fire campaign. So family fire is something that happens in your house due to an improperly stored weapon. We know we're safest when guns are stored um, unloaded and locked with ammunition, ammunition separate. Um, 4.6 million children in the U.S. are living in a home with an unsecured firearm. We know that 75% of school shootings involve a firearm found in the home and taken into school. And so in Family Fire is the idea that our gun violence program can't be solved unless we welcome gun owners to be a part of this conversation and the solution and activate them for safe storage um, and to be a part of the solution with us. Um, another thing Brady does is we have our com combating crime guns initiative. And so crime guns are guns that you know, go in the marketplace and at some point either get sold in the black market or get used in a crime. And so they're ending up um, generally on the streets and on hands that aren't supposed to have them. Um, we know that 5% of gun de dealers in the US account for 90% of all crime guns. So just 5% of these gun dealers, these bad apple gun dealers is what we call them, um, are profiting off lives lost. And so the ATF, due to lack of funding, lack of oversight, has not been able to do much about this. So at Brady, we have done, when I say a million FOIA requests, like I don't think I'm exaggerating, um, FOIA request after FOIA request to get this ATF document documentation. And on our website now, you can go and look at the firearm dealers around you and look at their track record to see are they the ones who are providing these crime guns or are they the ones who are actually who are following the law like they should be um and this is the first of this is the first initiative in the country that's trying to address the supply side of of these crime guns um so in closing today i will say the vast majority of americans are with us the vast majority want stricter background checks. The vast majority want federal tracking of all gun sales. Most of us want bans on high capacity magazines and banning assault style weapons. Um, Brady has been leading the fight on these issues for years, as well as that of banning the growing sale of ghost guns. Ghost guns are 3D printable guns that you can buy over the internet, print at your house, and they're non-traceable. Um, there's things we can do both locally and nationally now to save lives and spare families from the awful heartache of losing loved ones. So if you'd like to learn more or get involved, BradyUnited.org is our website. And really, it's going to take all of us together to solve this problem. But I'm thrilled to be here today with everyone who cares. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Amanda, for your shocking and informational words. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to to remind you folks and uh, to encourage you to donate uh, again by going to the Musicians for the Greater Good dot org website, pushing that donate button. Uh, our uh, donations are split between Brady United and Moms Demand Action. Peg Espinola has been playing the guitar since age 15. First teacher was fellow teenager Mike Seeger. She only sang other people's songs until 2004 when a class at WUMB's music camp, known as Sam W., uh, made her into a songwriter. Her songs reflect her lifetime concern for social justice and democratic values. Please welcome Peg Espinola. Yay, Peg.
Thank you. It's really an honor to to be here with these other musicians and with these wonderful representatives of the organizations that are combating gun violence. I feel like this my song was placed very carefully after um, the last speaker because it is a it uh, addresses the issue of ghost guns <laughs> in the um, in the manner of of Ellis Ralph. <laughs> My garden is a shambles from the chipmunks and the voles. The bunnies eat my lettuce, my lawn is full of holes. There's sprays and traps and other stuff, I bet I've tried a ton. But what would really do the trick is an automatic gun. Alas, I cannot buy one, cause my, my record isn't clean. I did a stupid thing once when I was feeling mean But now there is an answer for felons just like me A guy has posted diagrams for all the world to see I'll buy a 3D printer and some special plastic too Then take my pick of downloads, I think there's quite a few there's an automatic rifle, it's like an AK-47. I'll print it out in triple D and send my voles to heaven. And I know I'll feel much safer when I can stand my ground with a snazzy plastic rifle that fires round after round. How about you, my friends and foes? Would you feel safer too? From garden pests and canvassers who got you feeling blue. Just pick yourselves a weapon and print it in 3D. And we can live forevermore in jolly anarchy. So thank you, Cody Wilson, for your 3D printed gun. I'm gonna get that diagram and have myself some fun. And when I'm feeling threatened by some stranger at my door, why I'll just grab my gun and they won't bother me no more. Yes, I'll just grab my gun and they won't bother me no more. It's come to our attention that uh, some people were offended by Ellis Ralph's song. We uh, uh, want to tell you that it was satirical in nature uh, and uh, tongue-in-cheek and that uh, Ellis doesn't really feel that way about anything. So, uh, it's meant, out, meant to point out the absurdity. That's right. And moving right along, Tristan Israel is a singer-songwriter who lives on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, and he, oh, <laughs> sorry, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, and he's been performing in public since the early 70s when he was with the band The Pencil, the Pencil Tappers uh, with his brother Ron Israel whom we'll hear from later. Tristan's been a fixture on the local music scene and his style of writing and playing blends music influences from old country blues to folk and rock and even some jazz. Give it up for Tristan Israel. Thank you. Thanks guys. Uh, it's an honor to be here uh, and I guess I'm getting to know some of the other faces here from uh, MGG. Uh, I'm going to do a song. Uh, Got to get my guitar. <laughs> I'm going to do a song um, that uh, perhaps the biggest gun violence in the world uh, are wars. And that's where went many of the guns that filter through uh, to folks, young folks in particular in our country, come from uh, weapons manufacturers. And uh, with the state of the world today, obviously, they're having a heyday. And uh, this is a song written by a man named Daryl Adams. Uh, 
been credited to other people. He wrote it in 1957, uh, sort of in a remembrance of the Korean War. And uh, Daryl Adams, if you get a chance to Google or whatever, was a very interesting man. He left the country, uh, went to England for a while, and uh, hung out. Well, he uh, was a, a compatriot of uh, Ramblin' Jack Elliott. But he left the country, was in England for a while, and influenced uh, greatly people like Donovan and other uh, English folk singers. Ended up, I guess, living, I think, in uh, Holland. Um, but this is a very simple, extraordinary song. And uh, of course, my phone, I got to shut off, because it rang right when I hang up off. OK, thank you. <laughs> Great. Tristan, mute your phone. Let's try this again. Oh, yeah, we're so lucky uh, yes. to have all these great, talented people <clears throat> who care so much uh, about the issues. Jimmy Lunsford has been writing, recording, and performing for 15 years. He's inspired and influenced by popular artists as well as local artists from communities across the country, courtesy of both his uh, day job as a traveling consultant in biotech and virtual communities born of the ep epidemic in 2020. He's nearing completion of his third record entitled Home, and it is a collection of 30 songs devoted to social issues and personal connections. He lives in Santa Clara, California, and uh, loves joining us here at the Catbird Cafe uh, every Saturday night uh, for song and celebration. His constant companion is his loving and patient dog, Parker, who enjoys long walks on the beach. Go, Parker. Give it up for Jimmy Lunsford. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. It's awesome to be here. This is a fantastic event. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Amy. I'm a huge supporter of Brady and Moms Demand Action and March for Our Lives and Sandy Hook Promise and more. I wrote this after 
the Valentine's Day Massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I was only ten years old when freedom rang. Still too young to navigate when I became a man. My father died in front of me his musket in his hand he said arm yourself and take your stand in front of the flag i was only 12 years old when freedom rang Emancipated by a man Who said equal I am My father died in front of me Chains on his hand he never lived to see the flag fly as a free man. The truth will always set you free. Knowledge will command. The wise will learn from history. The fool will be damned. I was seventeen years old when freedom rang. Graduate and find my way The best that I can My teacher died in front of me Her textbook in her hand Who can teach a broken child when they've a gun in their hand I'm a student tomorrow Learning what I can From behind a barbed wire fence And an armed doorman My freedom died in front of me In a politician's hand He said arm yourself and take your stand from behind the flag The truth will always set you free Knowledge will command The wise will learn from history The fool will be damned
Oh, thank you so oh, much, Jimmy Gunsford. Oh, wow. oh. oh, thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Jan Luby is a storyteller known for her engaging stage presence and a voice full of passion, range, and power. Her original songs range from socially relevant to irreverent, uh, heartbreaking to humorous. She's every bit as comfortable on a festival stage in front of thousands as she is in more intimate settings like coffee houses or singing from her cell in solitary confinement. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jan Luby. Very good. Thank you. So um, I was actually surprised that uh, when I sent this song in that that I was added to the show because it's it's well it's different uh, it's more personal and I don't know how to I mean I've tried writing political songs I only just I end up writing better songs about things I know and this was um, written about a friend uh, lost to gun violence but in a different way <laughs> Living on the river in misery When heaven was right under your feet But what good is paradise if you don't see And memories leave you blind to a peace you never find when you played guitar you found the perfect notes you carved beauty into wood and bone forged metal into tools of war from long ago but all your gifts did not erase a past you couldn't face you left behind your friend your pain ever end or do you have to come back and do it all again you died near the river by your own Quick decision, or was it planned? There's no way that we could understand. But I wonder what you would have done if you didn't have a gun. on the river misery when heaven was right under your Beautiful. Oh, well, that was beautiful. Jan Luby. There's all kinds of statistics, but the last one I saw was like 54% of gun deaths are suicides. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, it's suicide season. 
sort of uh, brutal statistics we're hearing today. Yeah. We're all in it together. Thank you, Jan. MTG member and environmental crusader Mike Delaney is a Boston area singer-songwriter, part of the music group The Tritones with Karen Sauer and Chris Lee. He's a founding member of the Rosendale Open Mic uh, and uh, has released five CDs, including Boston Harbor, No Longer Dirty Water, and he was instrumental in cleaning up Boston Harbor, you may recall. <laughs> it used to be really dirty, uh, as dirty as the song says. Now put your hands together, please, for Mike Delaney. Thanks. Well, thank you. It was, it was wicked, wicked dirty. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, uh, I wrote the song to, uh, as a tribute to Riley Howell, who three, four years ago was a student at University of North Carolina at Charlotte and had to make the decision that we hope that our children, our grandchildren, never have to make. Run, hide, fight. That's what the trainer had said And he showed us all the video So we wouldn't wind up dead It seemed so far away An unexpected sight That became our urgent warning Run, hide, fight Group presentations on the last day of class. Riley listens close, then it happens so fast. Young man in black jumped up, firing off his gun. Riley's first thought is, where can I run? Run, run, run. Riley thought to run, no way left to flee, couldn't escape the gun, Riley couldn't run. The classroom is crazy, shrieks and screams and shouts, the gunman taking aim, his shots are ringing out, Riley looks around. No way to get outside Everyone is trapped Trying hard to hide Hide, hide, hide Riley thought to hide If there were a closet He surely would have tried Riley couldn't hide Riley knows his heart, it's the time to bravely act. Has to save his friends, there's no turning back. Riley makes his choice, though his chances <clears throat> are slight. To take the gunman down, now's the time to fight. <clears throat> fight, fight, fight. Riley chose to fight With the gun still blazing He charged with all his might Riley chose to fight Taking three bullets As he crushed the gunman down Without hesitation Riley took him to the ground How many were saved we can only guess Now Riley is an angel And we know Riley's blessed Run, hide, fight There are times when you must fight If run isn't an option And there's nowhere to hide Sometimes you must fight Like Riley chose to fight Yes, indeed. Mike Delaney, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Amy Herlihy, 
is a mother, a speech-language pathologist, and volunteer with the Rhode Island chapters of Moms Demand Action. Uh, and she became a volunteer eight years ago and is inspired to hashtag keep going by survivors of gun violence and other volunteers from across the country who work tirelessly every day to end gun violence. Welcome, Amy Hurley. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much to Musicians for the Greater Good for your support tonight. Your performances and your songs are powerful and haunting. And I really think that they speak to the reason why it's so important to talk about gun violence and what we can do to change. So thank you so much for inviting uh, me to join you tonight. So my name is Amy Herlihy, and I'm a volunteer with the Rhode Island chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. And Moms Demand Action is a national, nonpartisan grassroots movement whose singular goal is to end gun violence. Moms Demand Action was founded the day after the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School by Shannon Watts. And today, Moms Demand Action is part of Every Town for Gun Safety, which also includes the Everytown Survivor Network, Students Demand Action, and Mayors Against Illegal Guns. And together, we comprise the largest counterweight to the gun lobby, with 10 million supporters nationwide and chapters in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Our volunteers come from all walks of life and backgrounds, and we're not all mothers. We're brothers, sisters, fathers, and grandparents who have a shared goal of ending gun violence. And I'm going to reiterate some of the information that Amanda shared in terms of statistics about gun violence. Gun violence is a public health crisis in the United States, with over 110 people killed and over 200 wounded every day. Firearms are the leading cause of death for American children and teens. And while gun violence impacts every community in the United States, we recognize that not all groups experience gun violence in the same way. For example, we know that gun violence disproportionately affects Black communities, as Black children and teens are 14 times more likely to die by gun homicide as compared to their white peers. And it's also important to note that gun violence can take the form of domestic violence, hate crimes, and suicides. And I know that when hearing these statistics, it can feel like we're not making progress towards ending gun violence. But as Amanda spoke to this earlier, I'm going to speak to it now that we are in fact making progress every single day. And now I wanna share some of the progress that we're making. So one of our key strategies for ending gun violence is passing common sense gun safety laws and policies. And in July, we worked to get the first federal gun safety law passed in 26 years. And the new law is called the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, and it encompasses many research-based strategies to address gun violence, including enhancing background checks for gun buyers under 21 years of age, federal funding for community violence interruption programs, and investing in school-based mental health services. Now here in Rhode Island, we've also been working hard to pass gun safety laws at the state level to keep our citizens safe from gun violence. In the past few years, we've passed laws that limit high capacity magazines to 10 rounds, a law that prohibits the open carry of loaded long guns in public, a law that prohibits concealed carry permit holders from bringing loaded hidden guns into schools, and a law that prohibits the manufacture and sale of ghost guns. And our success is truly thanks to our volunteers who spend countless hours of their time advocating to get these bills passed and working to elect our gun sense candidates. And gun sense candidates are people who run for office at all levels of government and pledge to support common sense gun safety legislation. And during the November election that just happened, there were over 5,000 gun sense candidates nationwide and 125 here in Rhode Island. Another key strategy that we use to address gun violence 
is public education campaigns. And one campaign is called the Be Smart Program. And the goal of this program is to raise awareness that secure gun storage, which means storing guns unloaded and locked separately from ammunition can save children's lives. And Be Smart emphasizes that it is the adult's responsibility to keep guns out of the hands of children and that everyone, grandparents, aunts, friends, can play a role in keeping children safe from gun violence. So what exactly can you do to keep kids safe? First, secure all guns in your home and vehicles by storing your firearms unloaded and locked separately from ammunition. Next, model responsible behavior with your guns. And before visiting friends and family, ask about the presence of firearms in their homes and vehicles. And if there are firearms, ask how they're stored. You should also recognize the role that firearms play in teen suicide. And finally, tell your friends and family about how to prevent kids from accessing firearms. To find more about this program, please go to the website besmartforkids.org. Another public education campaign we have is called One Thing You Can Do. And this program educates people in states with red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders on how to access these tools. Red flag laws are designed to help prevent mass shootings and gun suicides. And I want you to know that two thirds of all gun violence in the United States and 67% of gun violence in Rhode Island are gun suicides. Red flag laws put time and space between an individual who might be at risk of harming themselves or someone else with a firearm by temporarily disarming them. So for more information and to find out if your state has a red flag or extreme risk protection order law, visit the website onethingtodo.org. As my remarks come to a close tonight, I'd like to share that if you've heard this and if you've heard the powerful and haunting songs from the musicians this evening and feel like you've had enough, it's not okay to live in the United States and worry that your child will get shot in school or it's not okay to worry that you, your family or your friends may be shot at the grocery store or at your place of worship, or even just riding in a car, then join us. We want volunteers from all walks of life and background and from all across the country. And to get involved, you can text the word READY to 64433, or you can go to our website, momsdemandaction.org. So again, I would like to thank musicians for the greater good for this opportunity to participate again and for your support to highlight and end gun violence. And I want to thank anyone who's able to make a contribution to our chapter and to let you know that 100% of donations that are made to our chapter go to our chapter and we're incredibly thankful for your generosity. Ah, thank, thank you for you. inspiring words. Uh, hear it up for Amy Hurley. And uh, it's the perfect time for us to remind you about that big red donate, big red donate button uh, on uh, uh, musiciansforthegreatergood.org. And uh, remember that our uh, anything that we make today will be split between uh, Moms Demand Action and Brady United. Moving right along, Dick Pierce has been writing songs since the 60s, but only began performing and recording regularly in 2018. A lifelong student of popular music, his repertoire contains historical songs, some over 100 years old, and originals. He's recently collaborated with Mr. John McHugh on several CDs and enjoys setting poems of Johnny Flaherty uh, and Kimball Hunt to music. Uh, his recordings available at no cost on CD and YouTube entertain a small but intrigued and growing cadre of listeners. Let's hear it for Uncle Dick Pierce. Thank you, Stephen.
Uh, this this song was written especially for um, this event. It's called <clears throat> Guns Are Ev Sorry, Guns Are Everywhere. of the temple are protected by guards. The haters are lurking in our backyards. Can't remember when living was ever this hard. Violence threatens and guns are everywhere. Violence threatens The wild west around here where anyone can get a gun. They have their slogans and here's a gem. If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have them. But when anyone can buy a gun on a whim, violence threatens guns are everywhere. performer <clears throat> excuse me is an emotional alchemist and a healer her songwriting transforms pain into strands of gold with over 12 studio albums her music's been featured in the boston globe boston magazine and on npr and in march 2020 linda started a weekly live stream songs from the heart meditations for the heart now with a global following She's written songs for nonprofits like Light Up the Love, which was voted number one folk chart song of the summer in 2020. Give it up for Linda Marks. Thank you so much. I have been just so moved by both the spoken words and the songs shared. This is a topic that's particularly near and dear to my heart. And Amy, when you spoke, it really touched me particularly. The song I'm writing is where children intersect gun violence. And it was my response to the Uvalde shooting. And I've just recorded it. I have a new album called Everyday Legends coming out on January 1st. And there are a number of songs about what it's like to be a child in this world today. And this song, which is called Our Children's Prayer, has children singing on the chorus. This is Our Children's Prayer.
children, your daughters and your sons. Give us protection, don't shoot us with your guns. Our future's in your guiding hand. We want to be here to build Beautiful song, wow. Linda Marks. Thank you so much for that. Namaste. Um, Joan Lang wrote her first book when she was five and continues to write, driven by her lifelong commitment as an environmentalist, equality and human rights advocate, poet, and entrepreneur. She's been a spokesperson for UNICEF and has worked with President Carter to promote solar energy and alternative fuels and rights to open eyes and open lives. Give it up for Joan Lang. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored to be with you all. And it's such a, a beautiful spirit and force. And I have, um, sadly, I've seen up close as an advocate in D.C., uh, the the fierceness and the um, the ruthlessness of the lobbyists, and I've also um, I appreciate everyone addressing the different areas of trying to sort of see why people, these things are happening. And I feel like um, the mental health issue it's our broken mental health system, as well as the big pharma with the pharmaceuticals. I've seen very much up close how even seemingly innocent medications can cause people's brains to sort of go towards hatred. And I just think we need to put together a package so that uh, we can capture these things at the source. And I, um, prior to COVID, uh, I was with a group of people from six to 60 and more um, who we stood outside in Salem, Massachusetts and uh, protested the gun violence every month. And people from all of the world come there and they would just look at us and say, what is wrong with this country? And so I appreciate what everyone is saying and all the the songs and the words it's just we need to fix our beautiful country and make it whole again and um my poem um is live free and die bang here they come again assaulting with rifles taunting our right to live to give our family food go to school pray get medical care and work in peace no 
those from the gun lobby and companies have paid sums to have video games feature their guns. Not just the visual you see, but the added heightened sense of unreal reality with the vibrating sensation. Bam, 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 bam. You hit someone with your virtual gun. Doesn't it feel good? Knock on wood, it's not your neighbor or your daughter or your dad. When some teen turns bad and grabs a gun from an unlocked cabinet or some store on the street and says, look at me while I stroll anywhere you might be. And you wipe your friend's blood on your face to stay on earth and not get hurt. I rat-a-tat-tat with my machine and wipe the floor clean with your tears. I won't ask how you vote. You'll just never go home. And I'll stream it all live on screen until quite possibly I die. My mind is made up. Broken hearts, shattered visions come together one by one. Heard another wound, the world's destroyed, but save a life and you will save the world. No more darkness, no more crying, no more hiding, no more lies. Looking for the way back home again. Save a life and you will save the world. In the garden, angels singing, wipe your eyes. No more fear. Take my hand, we'll build the world together. Save a life and you will save the world. Morning comes, a new day has begun. See the light and come to greet the day. Take my hand, we'll build the world together save a life and you will save the world take my hand we'll build the world together save a life and you will save the world beautiful Thank you for who you are, what you do. Joan Lang, ladies and gentlemen. And a, and a, and a cameo yeah, appearance yeah. by her cat. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was yeah. sweet. His yep. name is Moses, so he likes to save the world, too. Yeah. Oh, so Moses. All right, Moses. Okay, well, we're coming to the end of our concert. Uh, it's gone by just like that. And uh, we're going to call on David Roth uh, once again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Ron. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thinking ahead, uh, nothing personal. Uh, I know that you've been uh, writing songs since you were 12 about life, love, and social justice, and that your work has been praised by the late John Hammond Sr. of Columbia Records, mm-hmm. Richie Havens, Barry McGuire, and NPR's Susan Stamberg, a co-founder of Musicians for the Greater Good, uh, and uh, and a great guy and a good friend. Give it up for Ron Israel. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Can you hear my guitar? Yes. Yes. So I went to Mama. And I said, Mama, Mama dear, what about peace in this world? She replied, not around here. She sent me off to college. Where they speak about big ideas. 
And I spoke about mine, and they said, well, sounds fine. Not around here. No, 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 not around here. Then I wrote the president made sure all my letters were clear. I said, what about peace? In this world, he replied, not around here. So what am I to do? Nobody believes it's true, except maybe you, except maybe you. Ask the soldier going off to battle. Ask the mom whose son disappeared. Ask the thinker. Ask the drinker. They'll say, mm, not around here. Not around here. Some say, go work on your outlook. And others say, conquer your fear. And some preach reconciliation. Not around here. No, 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 no. What am I to do? Ain't no one believes it's true. Except, except maybe you. Except maybe, maybe you. Ain't no maybe about it, we all. We all believe, Ron. Ron Israel, ladies and gentlemen. I love that song. All right. Now let's go back to David Roth, who will uh, escort us out musically. Um, and this was a great evening. I want to thank you all, and uh, and you, David. Um, and uh, we're so glad you could come. We appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, David Roth. Thank you, David. Thank you. you know, I'm just going to say the obvious. Uh, I'm so reminded tonight of uh, the beauty of the written word, the spoken word, the sung word, and how every single person on this Zoom presented so beautifully and passionately. Uh, and it brings back the rhetorical and unanswerable question into my mind. Can a song, can a poem, can... Uh, a speech save or change the world you know I'm one of those people who believe it can and you have all reaffirmed my faith in that every single one of you by your beautiful contributions to this uh, this cause you know I've talked about this before but Pete Seeger wrote co-wrote if I had a hammer like 70 years ago you know so many of us have been singing that song and I still sing it to this day for 70 years like when do we get it you know when do we get it? And what seems so obvious to me, obviously, isn't obvious to other people. But you have reminded me of the obviousness of the sacredness and sanctity of human life through your beautiful words. And uh, very, very moving. Thank you all so much. So if 
anybody out there besides me is ready for change of any kind? This could be a call and response song if you want to like sing in response. I leave lots of little gaps in there or if you just want to sit back and listen. These are my marching orders going forward. Secret job to strike some kind of chord to challenge and help, not dismiss or ignore. Everyone gets a chance with nothing to prove. I do my part Then the mountain will move I'm ready to roll To roll up my sleeves With passion and purpose And we can achieve promise of truth and the fight for what's fair to see that all people get their fair share so I'm ready for change ready for change I'm ready to go It's long overdue And a debt that we owe Everyone gets a chance With nothing to prove And when I do my part Then the mountain will move I do my part Then the mountain will move Oh, I'm ready for change Yes! Yes! yes. David Roth, a fitting and a beautiful song, a beautiful night. Um, I want to thank all, all you talented performers for all you bring, who you are, what you do. And of course, we are all in this together and uh, and we contribute in the ways that we can. And uh, you folks have all contributed very well tonight. And you folks that are watching, uh, you know you can and should contribute uh, to uh, these wonderful organizations by going to uh, musiciansforthegreatergood.org and pressing that big red donate button and knowing that all of our uh, um, earnings tonight will go uh, toward Greater United and uh, moms. and Moms Demand Freedom. Uh, 
It's okay. You've done good. Good night. No. Uh, Freedom and action. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, so we'll do what we can. We'll tell our friends. I want to thank everybody for playing. I want to thank my fellow musicians for the greater good. Ron Israel, Kathy Donlan, Neil Braverman, uh, Andrea Kulish, uh, Tom Maynard, Mike Delaney, and German Wh Sherman Whipple Emeritus. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Amy Hurley and Amanda Turner. And uh, that's about all I got to say, except as the Lakota say, Mitakuye Oyasin, we are all related. And Wakantan Kanishiyun, may the Great Spirit. <laughs>